Hello, a great welcome to this series on taxes. Myself Jaraj and P. This is tutorial number six, and will demonstrate the construction of moment rotation curves for shallow foundations. These curves are relevant in particular if one is interested in performing a dynamic soil structure interaction analysis of a structure, in particular using the substructure method. So let us first go and see the problem statement. So in the tutorial, we consider a rectangular foundation that is of size 6 meters by 80 meters that is founded on a clay strata of 30 meter deep. The soil domain considered for the analysis include a 50 meter by 50 meter area. The material model used for this tutorial includes a slightly advanced one that is a hardening soil model properly known as a chess model. The advantage of this model is that it predicts the stiffness using the three parameters which indicates that a more exact definition of a calculation of the deformation for example the first parameter is the E50 reference which is nothing but the secant modulus corresponding to a stress level equal to 50 percentage of the shear strength of the soil and this can be easily obtained using the tri axis stress strength curve and for this tutorial we assume this value is 8000 km per meter square the second one is the e oido reference, which is nothing but the titration modulus corresponding to the same reference pressure obtained from an oidometer test. And normally, this is assumed to be same as E50 reference value. Accordingly, we assume a value of 8000 kilometer per meter square. The third parameter is the EUR reference, which is the unloading reloading stiffness. And this is taken as a 24 into 10 kilometer per meter square. This is normally assumed as three times E50 reference. And one more important information regarding the HS model is that it also includes the stress dependency on the stiffness modulus calculation, which is incorporated using the parameter power m. And for this tutorial, we assume m value equal to 0.5. Now, the next one is the strength parameters, which include, as usual, a cohesion of 12 km per meter square, friction angle of 24 degrees, and a dilation angle of 0 degrees. Now, for this tutorial, we model this footing using a plate element. With a thickness of 1 meter and gamma that's the unit weight will be set equal to 0 because we are not interested in a, applying the sulfate. Now the, as far as the material is concerned we shall use a linear isotropic material with an E value of 25 into 10 to 6 km per meter square and a Poisson ratio of 0.15. So let us directly go to the plexus. The detailed development of the model for similar kind of foundations is already taken up in the previous tutorials. Therefore, in this tutorial, we will not uh, go in detail the model development. Rather, uh, the problem already modeled will be explained directly. So, obviously, we will start with the soil mode, wherein uh, we need to define uh, what we call as uh, the material of the soil as well as the stratigraphy. As you can see that, uh, if you go to the file uh, project properties, you will find that uh, the x minimum and x max it is set as minus 25 and plus 25 similar values for y minimum and y minimum y max which ensures a soil domain area of 50 meters by 50 meters now uh, in this case we have defined the soil material using uh, the so-called hs model so let me just show you the property that is assigned to this so this is a clay material let me just edit it as you can see that uh, it's a hardening model uh, hardening soil model that is selected and the drainage type is drained and uh, the unsaturated and the saturated unit which are already filled up here now if you go to the parameters as already explained the stiffness is defined in terms of the three parameters and these are already entered over here 8000 8000 and 24000 per meter square and the strength parameters are c phi and psi are already entered over here as discussed and then uh, uh, we have uh, uh, the so-called uh, the so called stratigraphy, and uh, regarding the stratigraphy, uh, it can be seen that you see for this case the soil model uh, is assigned with the clay and it extends up to a depth of 30 meters. Now, uh, for this problem, we have modeled the uh, foundation using the plate element. So, let us just straight away go to the structures, and in the structures, you can see that this is the plate element that we have already modeled representing the footing, and uh, regarding the properties. It's very simple. You have to go straight to the plates and uh, you can just edit it. 
and here you can see that yes we have modeled uh, uh, the plate using uh, 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 the foundation is uh, modeled using a plate element of uh, thickness one meters unit weight is assigned as zero and we have used a linear isotropic material with a knee value of 25 e6 kilometer per meter square and a new is that is 0 0.15 so this is a very simple model basically and this do not require any further explanation now regarding the uh, mesh mode uh, as this particular uh, problem involves determination of uh, the deformations uh, properly we have used a local refinement so if you go to the mesh and uh, let me just uh, uh, generate a mesh for you so I have uh, yes you can see that this is the mesh that is being developed so if I just zoom it you will find that the mesh sizes are very small okay, in and around this foundation because here uh, we are going to construct the moment rotation curves which requires that the deformations have to be uh, determined with a, a lot of accuracy so this is the this is the mesh uh, that's the way, as you can see that the plate that is representing the footing is refined and also you can see that the surrounding soil is also meshed with a, with a fineness factor so that we arrive with accurate results so this is regarding the uh, mesh now uh, we can go straight away to the staged construction so in the staged construction as you can see that uh, I have defined initial phase and in addition to the initial phase uh, Fourteen numbers of uh, okay stages or phases are defined. Fourteen phases are defined. Now, in each of this phase, what is done is that uh, regarding the moment rotation curves, two important things have to be noted down. First thing is that the moment rotation curve is uh, greatly dependent upon the level of axial load that is acting on the foundation. So, in this case, what I did is that I kept the axial load or the vertical load acting on the foundation as constant and this is taken as a 0.2 times or 20 percentage of the maximum ultimate bearing capacity of this footing and this vertical load acting on the footing that is kept constant or throughout this 14 phases now in all these phases what is done is that only the variable is that the moment the moment is going on incremented incrementing in a particular fashion for example, in this case, I started with a moment of, for example, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, like that. So the moment is incremented, okay, so that we ensure that the moment uh, theta or the moment rotation curve is plotted considering the proper uh, practical values of the theta. So having done that, now we can straight away look on to the results. And here, obviously, our results will consist of the initial phase and also it includes the results for all the 14 phases so let me directly take you to the values so uh, one very important thing here to be noted is that in plaxis in plaxis the accuracy of the deformation that we obtain it all depends upon the type of the modeling the type of the soil model that we use for example each and every soil model has got its own practical limitations advantages disadvantages and it is the engineer who has to decide which soil model is critical or it is mostly suitable to him so for this problem we have uh, 14 phases so let's just uh, inspect only one phase uh, so for example here I will be taking the 12th phase uh, that is identified as M12 phase 12 and here as you can see that this is uh, the deformed mesh let me just zoom it so this is a deformed uh, mesh it indicates that yes the footing has undergone a considerable amount of uplift at one end and a large amount of deformation compression at the other end so now let us go and inspect straight away the face deformation so the face deformation uh, p used so as you can see that yes this is the deformation the way in which the face deformation changes now in order to obtain the deformation uh, across a cross section what we can do is that we will just pass a vertical cross section through the footing and let me just take it to for example say minus 35 here and this is the second point as plus 35 and so I'll press ok so you'll find that yes this is uh, the way in which you know the face deformation changes across the length of the footing so let me just zoom it a little bit
So as you can see that here, the foundation has lost the contact for some length. For example, if you read that uh, deformations in that green zone, you will find that these are all positive displacement, which indicates that almost uh, say one quarter of the footing has uh, lost its length contact. It means that uh, uh, just because of the great larger uplift moment, one quarter of the footing is uh, no more in contact with the soil. And you'll find that uh, the deformation, the concentration of the deformations on the right edge, because we have applied a clockwise node here. Now let us uh, find out what will be the cross-sectional uh, curve corresponding to this phase deformation. So what we do is that we just take a line section. So for example, we'll take it from uh, say minus nine approximately. This is my minus nine if it has good enough. And uh, then we'll go straight to the plus nine. Plus nine, that's okay for us. So now this provides you the way in which you know the deformation has changed through the length. Now look here, as you can see that this is a, as expected, this is a linear profile. And almost you can see that one, one quarter of the foundation has lost the length because the blue indicates it is all the deformations in the positive direction. So this is how the deformation changes. Now let's also see the uh, cross section curve. So obviously I will keep uh, my initial phase here because that is my reference phase corresponding to a displacement of a zero. And let us inspect uh, uh, this uh, for uh, the 12th phase, that's the M12. And I don't want other phases. Okay. So now let us see how it does it. Now this is the shape of uh, the cross section, uh, you know, deformation curve. So as I've already explained, look here. This is my uh, displacement profile or the settlement profile at the initial phase and this is the settlement profile at the 12th phase. So as you can see that uh, to the left edge I have got approximately say 100 mm upward and to the right edge I have got almost say for example 280 mm downward. So and you can see that uh, at uh, approximately a foundation length of 4.2 meters, 4. okay I will say that it's a 4.2 meters the sediment profile matches with the initial profile, which means that for approximately 4.5 meters, the foundation has lost the contact with the ground. So you can directly measure the rotation of this profile as using U1 minus U2 divided by L, where U1 and U2 indicates the vertical displacements at the two ends and L is the length of the footing. So oh, that is all regarding uh, uh, the cross-section curves. Now, the results from the various uh, uh, phases that is uh, starting from uh, phase 1 to phase 14 is important to excel and a moment rotation curve is generated. Let me just take that to you. So I have got, uh, for example, here, uh, yes. So as you can see that this is my initial phase starting from M1 to M14. And as you can see that here we have generated the moments by the application of the coupled forces with a logarithm of 18 meters. And these are the various uh, U1 and U2 values. Uh, computed from this uh, axis and the corresponding rotations are listed over. And finally, a curve is plotted with the rotation along the x-axis and the applied moment along the y-axis. As you can see that the rotation stiffness of the foundation is larger at a smaller ro uh, rotations. And as the rotations increases, you can see that the stiffness drastically reduces. The normal observation that we see in every cases. Now, one more thing is that you can say that approximately at a moment so the footing is able to take approximately a moment of the 60,000 kilonewton meter so that's also important to us and remember these values can be uh, directly modeled okay in a non-linear way in the DSSI that's the dynamic source structure interaction analysis so as to uh, obtain a correct interaction uh, associated with the soil footing as well as the structure so that's all uh, regarding this uh, tutorial uh, thanks a lot for listening. Till then, bye.